الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين Respected viewers, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته a companion of the fifth holy imam and the sixth holy imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, Imam Ja'far al-Muhammad al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhima, was known by Muhammad ibn Muslim. He was very well respected, very knowledgeable, a devout companion of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam and a scholar and a narrator of hadith. One day, the Imam alayhi salam comes to him and says to him, Ya Muhammad, tawadha' lillah. O Muhammad, humble yourself before Allah. This was a very powerful message that the Imam alayhi salam gave to one of his closest companions. After a while, Muhammad ibn Muslim, who was known from a very respected family, well known in society there, was seen next to the mosque selling dates. People came to him and said, it doesn't befit you to be selling dates. He responded, that it is my way to humble myself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is acting on the recommendation of the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him. Humility, tawadha and humbleness is a virtue that has been heavily encouraged and strongly emphasized in the Holy Quran and practiced and praised by the Holy Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. The Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam would say to his companions, مَا لِي لَا أَرَى فِي وُجُوهِكُمْ حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ How is it that I don't see within your faces the sweetness of faith. They said, وَمَا حَلَاوَةُ iman What is the sweetness and the pleasure of faith? The Prophet says, التواضع. He responded back by saying, to be humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, رأس الخير التواضع The best of the righteousness and virtue is to be humble is to be in the state of humility before the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we pick up this wonderful dua, known as dua makarim al-akhlaq, by Imam Zain al-Abideen al-Sajjad salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, he says, Allahumma la tarfa'ni fi nasi darajatan illa hatattani inda nafsi mithliha. Oh Allah, every time people think good of me, I ask you that you lower my opinion of myself within me. In other words, I don't begin to see myself as someone important or someone who has necessarily achieved much. In other words, I don't begin to practice arrogance or self-centeredness or self-promotion, so to speak. And in the quality of tawadu is deemed to be a prerequisite for successful individuals and leaders as well as others in society, especially people who may have the tendency to, dis, uh, to exhibit and to become arrogant in certain parts of their lives. We are told in certain narrations, for example, each and every one of us must be careful of arrogance and takabbur, uh, especially as shaitan was the first who exhibited it and demonstrated it. Three devastating words when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, bow down before Adam, he said, Ana khayrun min. I am better than he. 
And these are still being used by people, by leaders, by nations, and it's caused devastation, war, bloodshed, and violence in many parts of the world across history. We are told that, for example, scholars, those who are wealthy and rich, people in authority and leadership, especially need to be careful that this type of vice, arrogance does not penetrate and does not go through their hearts and they do not necessarily demonstrate it in their actions. Amir al peace and blessings be upon him in Bihar al-Anwar volume 7 says, Ajibtu libni Adam, awwaluhu nutfa wa akharuhu jifa. I'm surprised. How can you think arrogantly about the human being? He says, I'm surprised. You begin and your start and your initiation is a clot and you end and there is a stench. End means after you die. وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ بَيْنَهُمَا وِعَاءٌ لِلْغَائِطٌ And in between, there is a need to relieve themselves. Yes. ثُمَّ يتكبر. Imam says, and with the, all this in mind, they still feel a need to, or the tendency to exhibit uh, arrogance and self-centeredness. Therefore, the invitation is to be Humble. How do we achieve this according to the teachings of the Ahl al-Bayt Imam al-Sadiq has a number of recommendations. He says, according to the narration, أَن تَرْضَى مِنَ الْمَجْنِسِ بِدُونَ شَرَفِك You must be pleased to sit anywhere when somebody, for example, invites you or when you go to a mosque or in any gathering. You shouldn't necessarily be expecting to be treated in a particular way. Well, you should initiate the salam, whomsoever you meet. Yes, sometimes people say, oh, he didn't say salam. She didn't greet me. Therefore, I'm not going to greet them. They should start first. So that's wrong. You should be greeting people. And of course, there is much more reward for the initiation of the salam rather than, of course, the obligatory response to the Islamic greeting. Where أَن تترك وأن كنت محقاً. You must leave the idea of arguing for the sake of arguing, even if you yourself are deserving or you yourself you're right. In other words, it's not about just proving a point or to prove superiority of an individual over another. And the idea as well is that we should be accepting criticism. Sometimes some people don't like it when they are criticized. We should love to serve more than be served. Imam Zain al Abidin al Sajjad sallallahu alayhi once within the caravan of Hajj, he was seen serving and somebody recognized him. And the moment they recognized him, he left and went somewhere else because he said, Now you recognize me. But the point is, he wanted to serve others, not necessarily wait or expect to be served. And likewise, another quality is that we should be eager to learn, eager to acquire knowledge, never to think I've reached a, a level where it's all good. I don't need to learn anymore. I don't need to become better anymore. I don't need to uh, enlighten myself more with ilm. But rather, uh, I should recognize alim. above every knowledgeable one, there's always one who is more knowledgeable. And learning is an ongoing process. Seeking ilm is an ongoing process. It doesn't stop at any time. Therefore, sad sometimes that we hear some of our mu'mineen brothers and sisters say, well, I have attended these majalis for a number of years. I, I, I am uh, tired of listening to the same things. I, I already know it and so on and so forth. Sometimes it needs one sentence. Sometimes it's one hadith, one verse, one story that will change our lives, that will inspire us. And in fact, and by the way, attendance in these majalis itself will bring much reward, number one. Number two, it helps in softening the heart. It helps in increasing one's spirituality, even though we may think that we're not learning, but the benefits are great. Benefits are immense, as recommended by the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wasalam, ahyu amrana, rahimallahu man, ahya amrana, revive our affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who revive the affairs. Similarly, our 
walking, for example, our speech should be reflective of the need to be humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the Quran tells us the Quman al-Hakim speaks to his son and say, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't lift your uh, face and your cheeks in arrogance above people and don't walk in an arrogant manner. Walk in an arrogant manner means that you're trying to somehow uh, highlight that you have a status that is not enjoyed by others. Yes. So in our day-to-day -day lives, what we say, what we how we present ourselves also has a bearing on the uh, careful attention to ensure that humility is indeed uh, uh, demonstrated and found within our second nature. All this is great. The goal should continuously be to seek tawadu and humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah, not before others. It is wrong, for example, to humble ourselves before the rich, yes, because we are seeking their approval, or before somebody who we want them to be happy with us, yes. Tawadu should be, and humility should be for the sake of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But the devastating consequences of takabbur and ghurur also should be kept in mind. Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi wa in a narration says, إِنَّ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ يَجْعَلُونَ فِي صُورَةِ الذَّرِّ On the Day of Judgment, the arrogant will be resurrected in the size of like atoms, really tiny particles, that people will step on, on the plains of resurrection. The Prophet of Islam, Muhammad and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ حَبَّةٌ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ مِنْ كِبَرٍ Anybody who has an atom weight of arrogance in their heart will not enter Jannah. Now, some people are worried about that. They say, okay, what do we do? You know, sometimes we are arrogant. Does that mean we never enter Jannah? No. What it means is that we try our best. And of course, on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does forgive those who are genuinely repentant and have tried. But uh, it is about whether we, we, God forbid, died in this state or did not care about seeking purity of the heart and tawadha in our lives. And we reach that state on the Day of Judgment. And Allah wa ta'ala, of course, after tawbah, and if He accepts our uh, forgiveness, seeking uh, repentance, purifies the heart before an individual enters Jannah, but it's about the state that we reach him on that particular time. And Imam Sadiq salam says, according to the narration, Inna fi lil There is a place in Jahannam specific for the arrogant, specific for those who are mutakabbir. Yuqalu lahu sa'ar. Shaka ilallahi shadd taharrah. It's called sa'ar. It actually complain to Allah due to the ferocity and the sheer heat. It actually complained to Allah. وَسَأَلَهُ أَنْ يَأْذَنَ لَهُ أَنْ يَتَنَفَّسُ And this place asked Allah, can I breathe? It is so hot, can I breathe? فَتَنَفَّسَ فَأَحْرَقَ جَهَنَّمُ It breathed and it burnt Jahannam. It is so severe, it is so devastating, that particular description. And so you find continuously the Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt reminding us from time to time in Surah An-Naml, chapter, verse number 29. فَدْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Enter the different gates of Jahannam because you will remain there for eternity. فَلَبِئْسَ مَثْوَ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ This is the worst or how woeful is the outcome for those who are mutakabbar, those who are arrogant. People ask, why? Why do people feel the need to display and exhibit takabbur or arrogance anyway? What is the um, reasons or the, re the, the way in which people develop these unfortunately spiritual diseases and illnesses? Well, it is said that one of the reasons is self-insufficiency or weakness. We feel that we are not worth. We feel that we don't have enough self-esteem. 
and therefore in order to somehow acquire it or to get it we start feeling and uh, exhibiting actions which portray us to be better than others. Secondly, the need for self-admiration. There is that craving, there is that desire to be praised, there is that desire to be admired. And sometimes some people are in a state to feel arrogant because they want that admiration from people or that praise. We may also, God forbid, or be of the mutakabbirin because we have hatred to others and exhibit ourselves in such a state because of our animosity towards other human beings. And therefore, because we don't like certain individuals, because we despise them, we want to feel better than them. Similarly, this could also be due to envy, due to hasad to the need to somehow feel, why do they have something that I don't have that should be removed from them? Therefore, I should be known as an individual who is mutakabbir. Or I display uh, characteristics of an arrogant individual. And also, well, it's due to ostentation, showing off, lack of sincerity. These are reasons and more which may lead to individual, God forbid, towards that. Of course, there are remedies and we have to be uh, practical, we have to try our utmost. Seeking inspiration from the Quran and the glorious examples of the Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. First and foremost, we must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely and sincerely to help us. And there, must, there are stations in the year which we can utilize to seek that kind of assistance and help, that progression, that development in our lives. For example, if we go for Hajj or Umrah or Ziyarah, it is highly recommended that we utilize these spiritual journeys for our betterment, for our spiritual progression. And we need to highlight what's wrong with us. We need to even sometimes ask those who are close to us privately, not in public. Can you tell me, you'll be gifting me the best of gifts. Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al sadiq salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. In a famous narration says, Rahimallah imra an ahda ilayya uyubi. May Allah's mercy be upon the individual who gifts me my errors and mistakes. In other words, tells me about my errors and mistakes. Imam alayhi salam is ma'asoom, completely ma'asoom. But he's teaching us this is what we should be doing. Sometimes it's beautiful to ask somebody, a family member or a close friend, you know, in a serious matter. Can you tell me what is wrong with me? Do I, for example, suffer from ostentation? Do I suffer from takabbur or horur? Do I suffer from envy, etc., etc.? And then to work on it, to have a program, to constantly be self-introspecting ourselves. And when we go for ziyara, to be able to Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the name of the holy individual that we've come to visit to help us defeat satanic temptations and enticement towards practicing such transgressions of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, asking Allah wa ta'ala and utilizing opportunities throughout the year such as the month of Ramadan, such as the Hajj, such as Ziyara, such as for example when we are heartbroken or we are in special occasions where we feel really oppressed or somebody has dealt with us unjustly we are told the narration says Ana andal munkasirati I am next to those whose hearts are broken for genuine reasons of course if we are shedding a tear this is the moment to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the qada of hajat, but specifically to help ourselves in our lives to be stronger in defeating temptations of the shaitan and our own nafs too. We must remember that when we say Allahu Akbar in salah, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than to be described. And therefore, if takabbur and arrogance was something that was allowed or something that should be done, then why did the prophets who were chosen by God 
If anyone was somehow entitled to it, the prophets were, but they were the most humble of individuals. Therefore, it is uh, important to remind ourselves that we are nothing compared to, of course, uh, the greatness of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, we should be always cognizant and our thinking should be geared towards what punishment awaits those individuals who are not aware of the severity of takabbur and do not work towards seeking tawadah and humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, before other individuals. Similarly, let's not forget, it is something that people dislike. Notice that so many, so many of these virtues, Islamic recommendations, this akhlaq of the Ahlul Bayt, something that upon practice and upon adherence would make us more beloved by the people. People actually like us more when we are in these particular states. And likewise, we should be individuals who continuously strive by self-scrutinizing and holding ourselves accountable. This is known as muhasaba. I think with myself, how did I, how did I live my day or live my week? What did I say that was wrong? Maybe that I should not have done. Maybe write it down and so on and so forth. That in, a, in many occasions helps us to uh, somehow look over our deeds. But it requires strength of will initially to diagnose this issue, to highlight the dangers of this issue, to understand the severity of this issue, and then indeed to deal with it and not to allow it to escalate and all of a sudden it becomes more and more difficult. To remind ourselves that, for example, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in a narration says, Al-Tawadha'u Thamaratul Ilm that humility is the real fruit of knowledge. If we see people out there who are seemingly knowledgeable, yet they are arrogant, that they are self-centered, that they are show-offs, for example, know that the knowledge hasn't penetrated their hearts. Know that they, have not, they are not acting by the knowledge. The more an individual is knowledgeable, the more humble they are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how we've seen the uh, Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as salam demonstrate. And those around the Ahl al-Bayt too were inspired by them to be of the most humble of people. Salman al-Muhammadi, radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi. When somebody wanted to humiliate him, somebody wanted to somehow belittle him, he said to him, who are you, O Salman? You know, as in your parents are non-Muslim and so on. Look at the response of Salman. He says to him, Well, my sons and your sons, they originated from a clot which is dirty. And my end and your end as far as death is a corpse that is full of stench. If when it comes to the day of judgment, and the measures are placed. If your weight of good deeds are heavier, then you are the successful one. If their uh, the weight of their heavy, uh, the good deeds are light, they are the indeed losers. Look at how Salman. Uh, he says, you know, when you come to analyze and really reflect upon the status of the human being, well, think about their beginning and think about their end. Their real worth is on the day of judgment, their status before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whether they will achieve success or not and whether they will, God forbid, be of those who are uh, condemned by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed humiliated before mankind to follow in the footsteps of shaitan who is the father and the leader of the arrogant ones. As we indeed follow the glorious Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, who taught us how to be humble, who taught us how to be in the state of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is incumbent upon us to seek inspiration and to apply 
their lessons in our lives. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon us that tawfiq and to grant us the strength to defeat the shaitanic temptations and to continue to be inspired by the light and the magnificent teachings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhim ajma'een wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyin rahma Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ala ahli bayti al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-mahsoon. Thank <laughs> you.